very last event of Allied Week. So we're so glad that you could be here. Everyone okay on what a pronoun is? 
how you refer to somebody, like if I'm talking to Max, I would say, this is Max. And if I was talking to someone about Max, I'd be like, oh my god, this is Max, he's so cool. So I would use he for that. So if someone was talking about me, and I would say them pronouns, Max is talking about me. I would say, oh, this is like, they're so cool, because I know you call me cool. Um, <laughs> so I identify as non-binary, which is a means I am gender neutral. Um, I use it. Non-binary is an umbrella term to me, and not male or female. I just use it because I like the sound of non-binary more than I like the word agender, which is technically the term for being gender neutral, but I just use non-binaries. Everyone would see, we're going to talk about that more in a little bit, what being non-binary means. Um, so I'll get back to that, but um, I am a non-binary person, and I like girls. There isn't really a label that fits perfectly with that, so I just say okay. Yeah. Um, I am cisgender, I'm gay, I should say. Um, let me know if you can't hear me by the way. I am cisgender and I also identify as gay. I'm a cisgender gay male. Cool. Alright, so now we're going to talk about how being LGBTQ plus has shaped our lives. Um, sort of just being a member of the community has sort of given me my voice and given me the confidence because I know that what I've gone through in order to come out and um, sort of be confident in who I really am after, you know, 16 years of just kind of hiding a part of myself, it's really empowering and it's caused me to become a more outspoken human, I think, and it's helped me with a lot of stuff that I've had to kind of work around those little like, hills that I've like, had to cross. I like to classify myself as an outspoken person, and I think that does um, stem from my sexuality and my gender, because being around so many people who are so confident in their gender and sexuality, it has really helped me be like that and be more confident in talking about it, and it has helped me talk in front of groups like these. It's also really important to me when I get this question. When you are part of it, you kind of get that question. You know, why is this such an important part of your identity? And to me, being a part of the community has both positive and negative impacts. On the positive side, you are just that. You're part of a community. Um, it makes you feel less alone, especially after you come out, and you start finding people that you can relate to. But on the more negative side, it's something that, unfortunately, in society is still kind of seen as not normal. And so growing up as part of a community and for whatever reason, not really owning that. You, know, you may not have the language, you may not have the awareness. It may not be safe for you to, it can really take its hold on the way you see yourself, the way you interact with the world. Um, for me, generally being part of the community has had a really positive impact on who I am. I know that because I am gay and that I, was, and that I came out, I have met so many amazing people over the years that are like me and that I can relate to, and that are really outspoken individuals who are some of the most open-minded, most open-minded people I've ever met. Um, as a gay person, growing up as gay marriage was legalized throughout the states and the country, um, I saw that change is possible for the country, um, and that we can progress. And I feel like that's really, um, um,
lash out at you. Um, but just also know that what you think you're coming out will be, it most likely will not happen. There will be something that will just throw you for a whole loop. It just, it won't work out how you planned it in your head, and you just have to kind of roll with it. It's, if you plan it in your head and it freaks you out that something is not precisely how you planned it, you just need to take a step back and just collect your thoughts. I think that's really important. To just do it on your own time. Don't feel like there's, you tell one person and there's this, there's this pressure to tell everyone else. Because, I mean, I told the people that are that were closest to me first. Um, everyone had pretty good responses. Um, I know my parents were just like, it took you long enough. And stuff like that. <laughs> Which, it was, I mean, it was nice because it wasn't like this long drawn out thing. It was just like, okay, and it's over. But, um, and always just communicate and just tell them like, it's okay if you need to like process and think through. But um, if someone's coming out to you, don't get mad at them. Don't be like, why didn't you tell me before? And say it with like animosity because that's actually really, it hurts the person because maybe you weren't like comfortable or you were scared for some reason and it makes you feel like you were in the wrong. Um, well, Max said like, as well as like making sure you're ready, um, make sure you're around safe people too. And also, um, make sure you're in a safe place. Like, a lot of people don't um, think about, like they think a lot about what they're going to say, they don't think about where they're going to say it. Um, and that can be really important. Um, if somebody is going, if you know that they're going to react in a bad way, a lot of people like to do it in public, so that way the reaction will be less extreme. Um, so that is something to always think about. And just wait till you're ready, and don't pressure yourself. And for people that are having a family friend come out to them, um, just be open and say something. Don't be scared to say the wrong thing because a lot of the time saying nothing is a little awkward worse than saying the wrong thing. Uh, and just be there for that person, ask questions, because um, a lot of times a lot of people don't have somebody and just being there will do a lot more than you know. yeah. um, I guess for people who are coming out or who are planning to come out, I think, again, be in safe people, be in a safe place, but it sounds kind of dumb, but before you come out, try coming out to yourself. Own it. Say it out loud to yourself. You don't need to practice. You don't have to say it to anybody else at first. But saying things out loud, it helps you learn, but it also helps things become more real. So kind of practice what you're going to say if you do want to have a more scripted conversation. And for people, I guess, that are looking to be supportive for people coming out, really just listen. That's kind of your only job until the person coming out gives you another one. Um, they're, they're sharing something that's very personal, very close to them. And to really just be there to listen, be open, be present, be mindful. You know, and, and don't feel like, this doesn't really get talked about a lot, but don't feel like you have to be super on board right away. And that sounds bad, I'm not saying you have to be overly needful, but it's okay if it takes you a little bit to process, because we need to process new information. Um, coming out can be really stressful and really hard for a lot of people within the LGBTQ community, especially because of the general stigma that the public does tend to have about LGBTQ people. Um, and also, I know it was scary for me because I would see these absolute horror stories of people coming out to their best friends and to their family and being completely rejected, thrown out of their homes, and even um, hurt or killed or um, hurt like mentally by the people they love and that they thought really cared about them. And I know for me, going into my journey of coming out, it was really hard for me to even tell my best friend just because I really didn't know how she would react or how any of my friends would react just because I know there can be really big surprises for the people that you care about. And when I told her, 
it felt like a huge weight was just lifted off of my shoulders and I could finally be myself because she completely accepted me. And I know that that made me want to embrace who I was. And so from that point, I started telling my other friends and even some people that I was just acquainted with because oftentimes it can be easier to tell the people you're not as close to. Um, and then it came to my parents and I texted my mom saying, hey, we need to talk. And we went on the walk and I told her after she asked me what was going on. And she also had an incredibly positive reaction and really accepted me and just told me that, that she loves me no matter what. And then she did kind of pressure me to tell my dad um, which wasn't the best thing because you never want any kind of pressure wall coming out. And I told him, and he didn't have the best reaction. And I, it really hurt when what he said to me. And he didn't think I was even old enough to understand, but I was in middle school and I was finding out who I was. And I think I really understood at that point. I just like guys. And it's taken him four years to get to the place where he is with just accepting it. Not even being the most supportive person, but just being okay with it. And that's okay because he has to process it. But it was really hurtful to me what he, his reaction at first. A lot of what I would like to say has already been covered, but I'd like to say that watching all the time, case you can tell we are the same, we're not <laughs> <laughs> Watching all that happen um, stressed me out about my coming out experience because I didn't want to experience the same things that he did, which isn't fair, really. But it did put it like um, it didn't pressure me. It just put like um, an idea in my head like if I like do be if I was who I was who I am, then all this would happen to me. And I did walk that through. But, yeah. I would just say one more important thing about this because it hasn't been covered yet. Um, if something comes out to you, don't tell anyone else. If they're coming out to you, they're coming out to you personally. That information is not yours. And it has to be up to the person coming out when, why, and if they ever do so with other people. So just, if someone's trusting you with that information, respect that trust and, and don't spread that information because that can not only be incredibly hurtful for that person who trusted you, it can also put them in a really dangerous situation. I do want to add on real quick. I don't think it's really touched upon how relieving it is when someone comes out to you and you're coming out as well. Wiley and I actually came out to each other at the same conversation um, back in when we were in middle school. And I was, uh, I had only told like, I think like, three or four people at the time. And I remember him texting me and like, I haven't heard this thing. Um, I think it actually started as we were talking about fans, probably. <laughs> and, and he was like, I have to tell you this thing. And he came out to me. And I, I just felt so relieved that someone else was going through what I was going through. And I think that's really important to remember that there are people going through this stuff with you. Like, there are people. Is what does it mean to be an ally and what can someone do as an ally? Let's start down there. Um, so what I think about what being an ally is is um, you don't just say you're an ally. You need to you don't need to do the most all the time to support the community. You need to do I say just some small thing supporting a friend. Because if you aren't going to be actually actually be supportive of at some point or another, that's like saying I did my homework when you only did one problem. You aren't finished with the job that you have. You still have you still have more than you did. Um, being an ally is really important for people within the community because that support that they are given through people who maybe aren't exactly like them is really powerful. 
And um, if you are an ally who isn't part of the LGBTQ community, um, your voice can be really important when talking to other people who may have opposing views and may not be the most respectful to LGBTQ people. And that's just because when people are confronted with something that they, about themselves, have a different belief, um, seeing someone who's like them have a different belief, like makes them question it themselves and make them wonder, wait, why do I think that way? And even if you do not agree with parts of the LGBT community, or you think that sometimes what people identify as might not be, like, I don't know how to say it, like, just not, you don't agree with it, that if you are just, like, respectful to them in their time when you're at school and they're around you, that's okay because everyone does have differing beliefs from each other, but it just matters that when you are around other people that you are respectful to them of their identity and how they feel. And that's, that's just all it is. Um, I think an important part of being an ally is being an ally at a time as opposed to being a theoretical ally. <coughs> because you hear a lot of that say, you know, oh, I support, you know, the LGBT community, but then say, but it's different if it's your own kid. Because when it becomes personal, it becomes a lot more difficult for people to accept. So I think an important part of being an ally is really supporting the people in your life. Because it's great to know, watch things with gay characters and you know, support gay actors, but it's not enough if you're not helping the people that are members of the community that are actually in your daily. Everyone good on what being an ally means? Yeah, so we're going to answer some questions that I'll leave here to ask. So, <coughs> so do you feel that at Silver Curtain High School people are welcoming and accepting of the LGBT community? Okay. That's good. Sure. Overall, yes, I feel like um, there is a really high level of support and sort of a welcoming attitude for people in this community, in the school, and I feel like that's a really good thing, and I personally thank you guys for all of that. Um, if you, I mean, there are, of course, some people that don't agree and are not respectful about it. You don't have to agree, but it's important to still be respectful to everyone, no matter who they are. It's just how it should be. But also, I should I want to mention, like, if you don't feel like you're in a welcoming, or if you feel like you're in an unsafe environment in the building, either talk to an adult, because they will be sure to help you. All the teachers here are amazing. They will 100% help you get through whatever you need. Or you can come to GSTA. Um, we are a safe space for everyone. You don't have to be in the LGBTQ community to come. You could just be like the A in GSTA's alliance. So, oh, yes. and the A. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, GSTA stands for Gay Straight Trans Alliance. Yeah. So, we are always committed to having a safe space for everyone to just express anything that they need to. And I feel like that's really important to share that if you feel don't feel like you have that space currently, there is one available. Do you have anything to add? I like this question. Um do you feel that at Pulse Portland High School or no, sorry.
realize it. At that point, it took me like a while to realize it, but I knew that there was something different at that moment. Yeah, so I was actually in fourth grade when I realized, um, so everyone probably when they were in elementary school had that like, little elementary school crush, and that's what I had. I just had a crush on another girl in my class. Nothing special. It wasn't a Zac Efron moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I was eight, and I had a crush on Rivers and the News. <laughs> So growing up, I always had crushes on girls, but it's because I didn't really understand what the crush was, and looking back at, on it, it was more like, oh, I really want to be friends with you. <laughs> and then I realized, like, oh, all the friends that were boys that I had were actual crushes, and I liked them. And But the thing is, I didn't realize, like, oh, that means I'm gay until I was um, 11. And <laughs> It was weird because I remember the moment I was like walking down the hall in middle school because I was like thinking like I was thinking about like a guy and I was like, oh, that's what that is. <laughs> and I realized and I was like, okay, I guess it's like I and then I started to just like think about it a little more and that's when I started to come out with my friends. Yeah, I had a very similar experience to you, except I didn't have guy friends. So um, so I just like found guy back in there and I was thinking like don't fall. I was thinking like this is me, like, this is me trying to process it. Like, I bet all guys feel this way. And no, they don't. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I realize. That's a nice question, I like that. Because a lot of the times people don't get to see that side of this, this joke. So, I think I'm going to take this question. Okay. Um, so, can someone be more than one pronoun? It depends on the person. Um, for me, if people called me more than one, it would be confusing to me. Um, but I have met people who don't really care. So yeah, some people look like more than one pronoun. Like some people are um, gender fluid, so they feel like pronouns. Um, you have to go to the next slide first. I will come back to the question because this is a good way to actually know. Yeah. Some people are. Uh, so they, we can see on the um, on the spectrum right here. The next question does talk about the spectrum identity, so I'll come back to all of this. But um, on the ends of this spectrum of gender identity, we can see um, woman and man, which is what we call the binary. Um, am I free go right now? <laughs> so uh, in the middle, we start to see um, non-binary. So anything that isn't the binary. That can fluctuate. So you sometimes you can feel gender neutral, sometimes you can feel male, sometimes you can feel woman. That's what we call gender fluid. So a lot of the times, people who are gender fluid um, do like to switch up their pronouns. Yeah. So we'll come more on the spectrum stuff in a minute.
they are identities that might take some more education for your parents to understand. Keep in mind that you, like Rose did say earlier, um, you probably have thought about this for a long time. And say you've thought about this, I don't know, for like three years. It is hard or almost unfair to expect somebody to get it in one minute, if that makes sense. So give not only your family members time, but keep talking to them about it. Help them educate. Um, and if you haven't even come out to this person, maybe slip in a few things like, oh yeah, look at this article, isn't this fun? Or like, um, just start bringing up the idea before you come out. And then ease into it. Yeah. I'm just saying, you just be safe. Yeah, that's really the most important thing. Um, I don't know, you know these guys' stories, but my entire extended family cannot know. And that's just a matter of safety as well as personal well being. So please, everybody's situation is different, but please evaluate your own situation and make sure that you're putting yourself first. You're putting your safety and your emotional well being first. Kind of another thing, just to add to that. You, if you tell one family member that you feel sort of comfortable with, again, make sure that you're comfortable with that one person. But also, it is perfectly okay to just say, don't tell anyone else, even in the family. I still have family members, my grandparents don't know, because I just, I have no intention of ever telling them. It's just not something that I want to do. But it's perfectly okay to just have one family member know so you feel more at ease in situations, but if you feel like uncomfortable around a certain family member that you feel almost obligated to tell, just tell other people, tell some people that you're comfortable with first, and maybe that will help you and will help support you in that situation. But also, just wanted to clarify again, if you need any help with this, this goes for anybody. Um, if you need any help with any of this, Come by to GSTA, you can talk to one of us, talk to adults, we're all here to help you, and we will be more than happy to help with anything that you may need. I feel like we did answer this one. I think that might have been put in yep. um, before we talked about her yep. crushes. So if that wasn't answered, then please put it in again um, if you want us to explain more. I'm going to hear it. So then you want to get some yeah. Really like okay. Um, <laughs> did you come out to your parents at the same time together? Short answer, no. Well, <laughs> well kind of. Kind of. <laughs> so, complicated. The same day I came out to my mom and my dad, my, my, it, our mom was like, if you have anything to tell me, you can always tell me. And I couldn't say anything because I was very stressed and was not ready. So I kind of choked out at um, <laughs> she was right, even though she was right next to me. Um, so I don't know the exact point where I said anything, which is really confusing for me. Yeah, and also with um, our dad, like right after the whole fiasco with him that night happened, that's when my mom called me. Yeah. So it was, that was also another level of it being pretty difficult for both of us. Um, did you tell each other first? No, we didn't at all. That's kind of weird because I know a lot of siblings, especially, you think like, oh, you're twins, you talk to each other all the time. Yeah, About this, no, which is odd. And so I just really sat, at, sat with it myself and told my friends who did overlap between us, but we never really talked to each other about it. And I know I kind of had like some idea where it was like, Maybe he feels the same way. And I, then I was like, probably. And then it, that happened. And yeah. So, what is the difference between bisexual and pansexual? So, we don't know if people all notice, we did all say that we are gay. So, we might not be the best people to answer this question, but I mean, we can certainly try. Um, does anyone have a way to get into this? So, the way I understand. Because I identified as bi even before I was ready to accept the fact that I was just super gay. Um, and <laughs> I think a lot of people do this kind of a stepping stone for a lot of people. Bisexual, with you know, the prefix bi, is an attraction to two genders. Usually it's male and female, but because 
we have talked about the fact that gender is a spectrum, not a binary. Bisexual is generally defined as the attraction to two genders. Where pansexual, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the attraction regardless of gender. That's, yeah. the, that's yeah. the way I've heard it described best. Yeah. And like, to add on to the definition of pansexual and bisexual, I know some people have their own, like, they they say bisexual, and but they include, like, all other gender identities within that. Um, so it's kind of up to the person, although what Rose did say is generally the two, um, uh, like, definitions you'll hear the most. So if someone does say, like, oh, I'm bisexual, or I'm, I'm, I'm pansexual, and you still don't really understand exactly what that means, it's good to just ask them in that situation. So we are running really low. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that I identify as bisexual, but really only because it's something that people are able to understand. Um, I like to prefer the term queer, but a lot of people don't really understand. Like, that's not specific enough for a lot of people, so I think it's important. But yeah, like you said, ask people um, when it comes to that. I think we are basically out of time. Um, these are really good questions. If you need answers to any of these, come up and talk to one yeah. of us personally. Email us. Um, find us on social media. We're fairly easy. To yeah, manage. we do have an Instagram. It's sphs.gmpa. If you want to direct message that account, we post it. You can always make like a like a fake email and like ask us for an email, like yeah. do something like that. You can probably reach out to most anyone that has our contact, um, or just even like find someone who has one of our numbers and just like anonymously text us if you don't feel comfortable giving us your names. We are here to help. We are not we will judgmental not, people. We're not judgmental. <laughs> just be sure that we will not share. Anything yeah. to anyone else, even between us, if you just want to keep it one on one, yeah. then that's what you get. But well, we are out of time. Thank you all so much. For Thank you. Yeah, thank you all so much.